Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These counts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to session Fartook-13. In our last episode, the party came face to face with their toughest threat to date. A giant crab gave the group quite a beating, but wasn't strong enough to defeat the intrepid group. A bag of goodies was also recovered by Welby O'Toole after the battle. We rejoin the group as they are given strips of crab meat from Dingus and the orphans and ponder their newfound wealth. Thank you said Lady Irena as she gingerly took a piece of crab meat that had been heated over a torch. She pondered consuming the meat, but watched as the others quickly gobbled theirs up. The small girl watched in anticipation of the pretty elven mage eating the food. Knowing the child had worked hard at the preparation, the wizard swallowed her pride and the crab meat, which pleasantly surprised her of the taste. She smiled to the girl and nodded her head, gaining a large grin from the child. Fargus, Cabe, and Dingus were arguing about bringing the children this deep into the dungeon. During the discussion, the orphan's leader pointed out that the party had cleared the way. They were just following in case the adventurers got into trouble. Sister Elaine quipped that the behavior was reckless and should cease immediately. Dingus thought for a minute and gave out a big sigh. <sighs> I cannot lie to you folks. You have treated us well. We were here in the hopes of gaining scraps from your victories or your potential defeat. I am sorry, he said, with his held head low and dejected. The group sat around speechless for a few moments and looked at each other. Welby O'Toole gave out another groan as he surrendered the coins that they had recovered. Dingus waved off the money, but Fargus pushed it towards the embarrassed man. The orphan's leader thought for a moment, and then took the copper ingots and the silver coins, but left the gold crowns. Here, you earned them. I cannot take that away from you. Besides, what you have given us will make a large impact on our lives. We will concede your point and stop following you. We hope you are successful in your journey and remain safe. The man gathered the children, who gave each of the dirty adventurers a hug around the knees, except for the halfling, who got a hug around the shoulders. As the man and the orphans returned to their lair, a tear fell from several eyes of the group, until Fargus cleared his throat and advised that they needed to press on. For several hundred feet, the line of adventurers were quiet and thought about the scene that they had witnessed. After nearly fifteen minutes of slipping down wet passageways, a strange noise began to echo down the tunnel. Fargus nodded to Cabe, who moved up quickly out of range of the torches. Using his dark vision, he made his way up to the entry point of another chamber. He surveyed the interior and returned to the group to report his findings. I got two men throwing axes at a target on the far side of the chamber. There's a couple of exits, no sign of the dog, <coughs> and it stinks up there. We'll have to make contact with them in order to continue. There's no way to sneak past as there's too much light in the room from their torches. The group pondered their options and opted to try the feint again, with two people entering the room and the other three remaining behind. Lady Irena and Cabe volunteered this time, while the other three hid in the shadows. The pair sloshed through the water, making a great deal of noise to ensure that they were not viewed as sneaking up on the men. Cabe made first contact with a big wave to the gruff-looking men. Howdy! My sister and I are a bit lost. Might you be able to... help us out? The two men looked at each other, then tossed their axes into the makeshift target, both striking dead center. The pair looked a lot like each other, and the group surmised that they may be brothers. The taller, older one licked his lips, and both brawny men approached the pair of delvers. Sister, huh? responded the man. 
I can go for a family way with you, pretty elf lady. Elf blood from the looks of you and your ears. What brings you down to our domicile? He said in a raspy voice. Lady Arena began to speak, but was cut off by the smaller man who advised her that men were speaking, and for her to shut her pretty mouth, which garnered an angry look from the regal mage. Both men laughed at her distress, and the older man taunted her, pointing out that they had offended her. Looky, her siblings, the man spat out. You're coming into our home, and you didn't even bring us a housewarming gift. What kind of people are you? His brother began to chuckle and ogle Irena, pointing out that she could certainly warm his house. Sister Elaine, hiding in the shadows, had had enough and barged into the room angrily. How rude of you, she sputtered, with her face glowing red. A look of faux shock crossed the men's faces and lit up seeing the attractive cleric. Oh, looky here. Must be our lucky day, Dorwin. Two ladies, one for each of us, said the larger man. You got that right, brother. I want the elf lady. But you do what you want to her, and I'll do her brother, queried the younger man. At this point, Fargus and Welby entered and pointed out that the men should be more mindful of their manners, especially with the ladies. The men studied the new numbers and doubled over laughing. Dorwin, did you hear what he said? We have poor manners. The younger man feigned a look of importance and cleared his throat. <coughs> harumph, harumph, Ioki. I do say this brood appears to want to teach us some manners. Indubitably, brother to which they both doubled over in laughter again before rising and quickly pulling two blades each. Manners will be taught, younglings, said Ioki, the older man, but it is we who will be teaching you. Each man kicked debris towards the group, and a sack of flour struck Fargus directly in the face, blinding him and knocking him backwards. A small jar in the debris struck Sister Elaine in the face and knocked her backwards into a pile of trash. Easy numbers, brother, as the pair nodded before diving into battle. Cabe Silvertongue also drew two weapons and squared off with Dorwin, with each clanging their weapons against the other. Ioki fainted towards Irena, but took two sweeps at Welby, catching him in the face and armor respectively. Lady Irena quickly re-engaged and cast a spell, causing her hand to grow bright blue. As she touched the older brigand, his arm turned white as frost, took over his appendage, causing him to drop his weapon. As Fargus frantically tried to wipe the flower out of his eyes, he was useless in combat, just like the unconscious cleric on the floor. Cabe slashed at Dorwin, catching him across the cheek, drawing blood. He smiled at his skill, but was quickly smashed in the nose by the pommel of Dorwin's return strike, causing blood to fro flow freely from the wound and making him stagger. Anger took over Ioki's face from the chill touch, and he kicked Lady Irena in the chest, knocking her backwards, and she fell over the groggy sister Elaine. A sneer crossed his face, but dissipated quickly as Welby buried a dagger into the man's stomach and kicked his knee from the side, causing the man to topple over in agony. Seeing his opponent go down with a serious injury, he leapt over the body to assist Cabe, who had several more cuts to his arms, along with a broken nose. Dorwin, also bleeding, observed his brother go down and began to worry, especially with the odds now out of his favor. The bully made several more attacks, but landed none and took damage from the attempts. As blood flowed freely from his face, arms, and legs, he put his hands up. I surrender, he stated. Welby and Cabe leveled their weapons at the man's neck, and he dropped his blades. Don't you dare, yelled out his brother, Ioki, who fell silent as Fargus, face still covered in flour, bashed the older man over the head with an iron old chair, knocking him out. Bind that ass, he commanded as he moved to help the ladies up. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures of Philbar, thanks for listening.